Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. My name is Erin Dion. I'm a middle grade and picture book author, and I am super excited because I'm here interviewing Anna Staniszewski, who's the author of over a dozen amazing middle grade novels and some picture books. Um, and she's got a brand new book called The Wonder of Wildflowers that just came out. And she and I were supposed to do an event together at the Blue Bunny in Dedham, Massachusetts. And um, because of health concerns, we had to put that on hold. But we thought that we would take our conversation to you via Zoom. Um, so here we are. So Anna, I am super excited to talk to you and I really want you to tell everybody all about The Wonder of Wildflowers. Oh, thank you so much, Erin. I'm excited to talk to you too. Um, so let's see, The Wonder of Wildflowers is about 10 year old Mira, who's an immigrant in a country that kind of like ours, um, that has closed itself off from the rest of the world um, in order to protect their most precious natural resource, which is this liquid called amber. Um, and it's basically magical. Um, and so it's about Mira um, trying to fit in at school, trying to make her parents proud. Um, and it's also about her just figuring out how to exist in this world um, where everybody's magical and she isn't. Wow. Um, this has a lot of themes uh, that sort of resonate with where we are right now. So can you tell me a little bit about where you came up with this idea? So um, I myself am an immigrant. Uh, my family came to the U.S. from Poland right before I started first grade. And when I started publishing books, people sometimes ask me, you know, why don't you ever write about being an immigrant? And I, to me, just never felt that exciting. I didn't feel like my story was really that interesting. And there are so many other people who had done it better. Um, but, you know, as immigration became more and more prominent in sort of the, the cultural discussion, um, I started thinking about like, maybe I should write something. Um, that's the way that I deal with things in my life is writing about them. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, I mean, I couldn't write that unless it was mad, you know, about magic or something. And then I thought, whoa, magic. So um, I got really excited about that idea. So once I knew that it was um, going to have a little bit of magic in it, I went from there. Um, at first, I tried to write it as one of my funny middle grade novels. It just didn't really work. Um, but then when I figured out that the magic in the story, you know, it's um, here, Mira was thinking, uh, you know, th she's moved to this magical new land, which is how I felt when I was a first grader, <laughs> who had come from communist Poland to the United States. Um, but then I thought, well, what if to her, you know, it's not that it just felt magical. What if it really was magical? Um, and so that's where that kind of story came from. And that's where that inspiration came from. And I used some things that were inspired by, by my own experiences and some things, um, that I kind of saw around me, um, it, both when I was growing up and more recently. Um, and then a lot of it I made up, which is the fun part for me. Well, that's awesome. Um, uh, you've mentioned the magic in the book a few times, and this is a very different type of magic than we've seen in your books or in a lot of other magic books um, or books with magic in them. So can you describe that a little bit for us? What's the magic like in this story? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of my other books, they have, there's like fairy tale magic. Um, and in this sense, there's just a little sprinkle of magic. Um, so this liquid called amber um, just makes you a little bit faster, a little bit smarter, a little bit stronger. Um, and so I like the idea that um, Mira is, you know, trying to fit in her school and she's trying to fit in with her friends and she's trying to kind of get along with her parents. Um, th those are th all things I think a lot of us can relate to, but then I really like the idea that she's in a place where she kind of has no hope of fitting in because everybody else is a little bit magical and she isn't. Um, so that was really interesting for me to explore. And I wanted to think about, you know, what if she does have at some point access to this magic? How is it going to affect her? Um, and then I also was really interested in thinking about, okay, well, if this magic only exists in this one country, what was that look like? What is this country going to do to try to protect it? And if the people in this country found out that the magic is dwindling, what happens then? So it just gave me a lot of really interesting avenues to explore um, in terms of the world building and the kind of magic systems in the story. Yeah, that, that's a lot to juggle. Um, and that's a lot of pieces to put together 
in a middle grade novel. So can you talk a little bit about what the process was like for, for weaving all that together? Uh, yeah, so this book was completely different from any other book that I've ever written. Um, usually I, I'm a very linear writer where I start at chapter one and I write all the way to the end and maybe there's some gaps that I fill in along the way and then I do a lot of revising. Um, but uh, but usually I, I write kind of bit by bit, um, you know, big, beginning, middle, and end. And in this case, it just came to me in random pieces, like a random scene of a couple of characters talking to each other, or just like a scene in um, Mira's classroom where her teacher is explaining something. It was just these little tidbits. And sometimes I would just, they would pop into my head while I was driving, and I would have to use like the voice recorder on my phone to record them. Um, and then I would just kind of compile this mess into a Google, you know, like a document. And then I had to figure out how to like arrange these random scenes into a story. And so for me, that was completely new territory, and it was really fun. It was also tough because yeah. I didn't really know how to end this story. Um, I had a, a, I had a tough time figuring out like what that big climax would be. And I actually remember Erin that at some point I, you and I were doing an event together and I like, we had a free moment and I was like, you need to help me figure out my story. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I remember like making you brainstorm with me. <laughs> um, and I realized that I was trying to tell too big of a story, that I was trying to include too much of the world um, that Mira exists in. And I needed to really focus it in on her community, her school, her very specific struggles, which, you know, might feel kind of small in the scope of the world, but but they can represent that, those much larger struggles. And And then it helped me figure out like how to how to tell the story and how to end the story, which I was really struggling with. Oh, I can't wait to, to get my hands on it and to share it with the middle grade readers in my life because I know that they're going to love it. Um, and there's so much of this that resonates with today um, from the conversations that we're having about immigration to now we're kind of all faced with cutting ourselves off and feeling like we're alien in our own world as we deal with this pandemic situation. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, you know, as you've been preparing to, to be at home, um, what are some of the things that you have on hand that you really uh, couldn't live without that you felt like you needed to have um, as we go through this? So when I found out that my li local library might be closing, I like got in the car and drove as fast as I could over um, and pat, you know, grabbed like a bag of books because I just felt like even though my house is full of books, what if it's not enough and I need more books? And then the other thing that I realized that I really, really need are nut butters. I have so many of them. Um, like my husband was like, do we need three jars of peanut butter? Do we need four jars of cashew butter? But apparently we do because that's what I bought the most of. Um, and then so much cheese, so much cheese. Um, <laughs> so we are, we are very well prepared. <laughs> <How about you? laughs> I, I feel like we're, I feel like we're very much aligned because I too have a lot of cheese. Um, I have a lot of Girl Scout cookies right now and uh, definitely plenty of books. So um, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk about Wonder of Wildflowers. I wish we could have done this in person at the Blue Bunny. Um, and I know that they're, uh, they wish we were there too. Um, they do have copies of our books for sale for people who want to buy them. Um, so I would encourage people to check out their website at uh, bluebunnybooks.com uh, to, to grab our books or any other books that they have at the store. Awesome. Thank you so much, Erin. Thanks, Anna. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.